following video is a training video for use in the Envision Septic System Simulator. The simulator represents a cross-section through a standard septic system found throughout North America. This particular simulator represents a single tank system that is divided into two chambers. Additionally, to the left of the septic tank is a short non-perforated pipe, a distribution box, and a perforated pipe. Dye will flow from the septic tank system through the non-perforated pipe into the distribution box through the perforated and then down into the absorption field and eventually out of the side of the simulator. Also included in the simulator for demonstration are two wells along the left side. Well number one extends just below the water table into the shallow unconfined aquifer. This will allow monitoring of the water in this unconfined aquifer as it's affected by the septic system dye leaching down into the water table. Well number two extends below a clay aquitard confining layer and thus separates out a confined aquifer below that that we can test that water and see the difference between wells one and two and the effect that the confining layer and clay layer has to separate those two parts of the aquifer. The simulator kit comes pre-assembled with the accessories shown here. Accessories include from left to right two siphon bottles a small wash bottle, a syringe unit for pumping the wells, some brightly colored rubber bands, one is also on the model currently to demonstrate where the groundwater table is at when the dye is not flowing through, disposable pipettes, some red Envision dye, a small amount of soap to create the scum layer, and a small bottle of desudzer the scum layer gets a little too full. Not shown right here is the submersible tank, which is included in the back of the model. Also, up on the platform, is a large wash bottle that will be filled with dye and water to simulate sewage coming into the tank and flowing through the model. In the next section, we'll view the back of the tank of the simulator and show how it can be set up for use. In this section we'll show the back of the simulator, how we get it set up with water and set up the die and the pump. As we take a look around the back of the simulator, you'll see that I've already filled it with water. There is a water level marker, and actually the water is just a little bit higher than that at the moment. I adjusted it slightly based on looking at the wells out front and determining that I wanted the water just a little bit higher than the water level mark. Uh, it's really kind of up, up to uh, the individual how they want to run it. As you run it a few times you'll see where exactly get that water level. We're pretty close to where that water level mark is at. The red rubber band simply shows, especially for the audience, where that water level is at since there's no dye in the model right now. You'll see the submersible pump we talked about. A long tube, we'll see where that goes in a minute. You can see four valves. Three on the inside, one on the outside. The outside one is closed, of course, to keep water from exiting the model. That's used to drain it when you're done. And you see a piece of tubing sitting there right in the foreground that also attaches that valve drain it into a bucket. The three inner valves drain the aquifer compartment in front at three different levels. Those are all open during normal operations. But they give you a fair amount of control over the model and where it drains when you're demonstrating different things with the septic simulator. As we go across the top, you see the tops of those two wells and the siphon bottles that we mentioned will actually insert down into those wells, push them in until they go all the way to the bottom, siphon bottle number one, and then siphon bottle number two. And when we get ready to operate the simulator, we'll simply squeeze those bottles.
and it'll be hard to see at this point, but you saw should have seen a small amount of water going in there, siphoning out, and we set up the second one the same way. If you want to break that siphon, you can simply pull that above the water level. It'll stop siphoning. That allows us to monitor that dye. Of course, it's taking water out of the model when you're operating it, so you need to make sure the water level in the back doesn't drop too far when you're running those two siphon bottles. They don't siphon out a whole lot. That's why the tubing is so thin. So it allows it to run pretty nicely. You'll see along the surface there is kind of a sponge grass material. Similar to vegetation. We, that will, water will pass through that. It's also nice that it keeps the sand in place when you're transporting the model. As I mentioned in back, there's that submersible tank. Three open valves. This divider just supports the model. You see two more valves. This one for the back of the distribution box and this one for the back of the septic tank. You can see them both there. Those are in the closed position during normal operations. Since we want the water and the dye to flow through the front compartment, not out into the back chamber. But again, they give you a level of control, also allow you to drain the model for cleaning purposes. Here's that access port for the distribution box. And here's the access ports, inspection ports for the septic tank. And there's some rubber, rubber caps there that allow you to open that you look down in there. Again, normally that cap will be in place because it keeps surface water from running down to the tank, unless that's what you want to demonstrate at that moment. I filled the bottle with dye, and you'll find that uh, adding dye is kind of, again, what you like, just much like the water level, you'll determine over usage how much dye is the right concentration for what you want to demonstrate. I've kept it fairly light, and I may find during the demonstration I will actually add a little more dye to darken that. But you don't want to put too dark of a dye, otherwise it doesn't flush out of the model real easily during your demonstration, especially if you've got multiple demonstrations in a row. A lighter dye is better as long as it can be seen in the sand layers. And you can see that I've also taken that tubing that comes off of the top of the bottle, run it down into the house sewer pipe line, pushed it down in so it sits down at the bottom. And when I squeeze that, it actually puts your waste into the model. At this point I'm just filling up the first chamber. I'll show that a little better demonstration in just a minute when we step back from the model a little bit more. As I mentioned, I pumped in or turned on the uh, plugged in the submersible pump, and you can see the small valve here is closed. A little bit of water leaking on the platform, not a big deal. This gate is closed. Move over just a little bit better. At this point, we don't want water want water flow on the surface, and we'll also leave this gate open to allow that water to fall back in. This valve opened just a small amount. People are surprised how little water you actually want coming out of it. That's probably all the more you want out because you only want a small amount of groundwater flow through the model. If we turn it on really high, we're going to get a significant amount of flooding going on and raise the water table considerably, which is going to create a situation with a high water table. You may want to demonstrate that if you want to show a failing septic system. For normal operations, at least where we start, we want just a small amount coming out and that will raise the water table ever so slightly. And what you can do is look at this side of the model, and you'll see it in this darker material. Hard to see here in the video, but you'll see it start to rise up. Again, the rubber bands lined up with the water table. Move it down a little bit to match that. And you see it rising up just a little bit there. Another place to look, we go across our model, is well number one. And you can see the water level there in well number one. Right there. Well number two is a little lower, it's in that confined layer. But we can see, and it's still below that gravel line trench. That's still maybe even a little bit higher than what we want. we to adjust that, go back up to our valve, and close it just a hair more. Reduce the amount of water coming in. Now we're going to step back from the model and show its normal operations. 